Okay, so, hello and welcome to this video. Uh, I've had over the past few days some requests as to creating a collection of the mods which I tend to play with. And I do have a video which goes over the uh, mods which I tend to play with, but of course this is subject to change. That video is a bit out of date now. So, I have gone and figured out how to actually create a collection of the mods which I most commonly play with. This is the ones which will most likely be active when I'm doing a series. Um, so if you want to have a campaign similar to what I have, or <laughs> whatever reasons, um, you can do so. Mostly for all the lords and the other changes. Um, as I've noted here, uh, for best results, I uh, please run it using Cadrian's Mod Manager. The uh, Creative Assembly mod manager is not very good from my understanding. Uh, also, it's important to, to make sure that none of the mods are active in the Creative Assembly mod loader. Um, you might have to load it up and make sure all of them are deactivated before you go to Cadrian's mod manager and activate them there. Um, because this could cause crashes and likewise. Um, what else? As I said, uh, overall these mods, there's no major uh, campaign overhauls in here. I personally rather like the base gains balance and how that plays. So all these mods are just really adding extra legendary lords, uh, adding some new factions as appropriate, expanding on some of the base, some of the uh, minor factions in the game, or completely new factions, but in a lawful manner, um, there's a number of mods which add new units to factions. Again, these tend to be based off of units which the which they had in the tabletop, uh, or ones which are a reasonable extrapolation. Um, there's nothing which will majorly change the overall theme of an army. Barring maybe one example, and we'll get to that. Uh, at least off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, um, so there's also some visual mods that change how factions and unit batters and the appearance of unit models are in it. Um, that's primarily the uh, uniforms and heraldry mods. They can cause some issues with appearance. If people have watched my Gorbad Iron Claw campaign, then you'll know I deactivated the Greenskins uniform and heraldry mod because it was making the units appear unlike they were supposed to be. There was also uh that was also the case, I think, for the Southern Realms with the uniforms and heraldry of the Empire. There might have been another example. Anyway so yes, on to the actual list of mods. Uh, apparently there is 62 mods here. This is not all the ones I have in my mod manager, but these are the ones which I tend to play with. There may be, as I said, small variations here and there as I add mods, deactivate them, whatever. Uh, so first up is Mixu's Unlocker Support. For, well, Landmarks of the Old World. This adds a bunch of unique buildings around the uh, campaign map. I think possibly for the uh, Vortex mode as well, but I tend to play on the uh, Mortal Empires ca campaign map. So, yeah, this just adds a little, you know, a little bit more interesting buildings to focus on in, in various locations around the world. I think a lot of them tend to add uh, extra trade resources. Which is nice, I suppose, if you build on trade. Uh, building progression icons too. Uh, this is one I subscribe to mostly because it's required for a, another mod, which I think was all the way down here. Servants of Nagash Faction Overhaul, I think it was for that. I think that requires it. So, it's a fine mod on its own. It's, um, it changes the build icons so that they have a bit more, you know... Level 1 looks simple, level 2 is a bit of an improvement. Level 3 has a, you know, more developed icon, just so that the, uh, I don't know, the progression of them is a bit nicer. I think it's just 
purely visual. Yeah. yeah it's just nice. Return of the Lich Master from Kataf and Vandy. This expands on the Barrow Legion faction uh, with all of the uh, niceties that we saw in my Barrow Legion playthrough uh, with Heinrich Kembler, Krell, and uh, the Nameless Lord, uh, the Prophetess or Priestesses um, Ghosts, and also. What was the other one? Oh, I forget. Anyway, it just expands the faction. They're a mixture of undead as well as uh, Barrow Guardians and all that. Uh, Kataf, Kataf's Krakadrak, the North Dwarves. This expands Krakadrak up in the north. I haven't actually done a series on them, uh, but that's one which has been active in the background for pretty much all of my campaigns. Yeah, even though we haven't seen them, I don't think, since I did my Kislev campaign, which was the first one I did. Um, as dwarves, they are focused more on melee and rune magic than technology. And so they're able to more solidly go blow for blow against Norskins. Um, Katas reskins, Hargadus executioners, and armored high elf archers. This is purely a visual mod. And I consider it very important because it replaces the skull helmets, which the Hageneth executioners have, with a peaked helmet like their uh, Dread Spears units have. Personally, it's really just a personal decision, but it looks makes them look like how the executioners for the Dark Elves looked like prior to 8th edition. Um, and I think it makes them look better uniformed for the rest of the army with their coned helmets, as well as a chain uh, face mask. So yeah, I think it also, as it says, adds some extra armor for the high elf archers. Or well, armored high elf archers? I, I don't remember. The main thing is for the executioners there. Uh, Cat have Southern Realms. This adds the factions of Talia, Estalia, and Border Princes. Uh, with new units, new lords, as well as mechanics for those factions. Asset storage. This is required for this. Uh, Celestial Hurricaneum, this is a nice mod, as it says, by Chaos Roby, which adds a uh, Celestial Hurricaneum for the Empire. I have not actually had a look at this yet. Uh, it's a new vehicle for the Empire, I think based off of the Luminarch of Hish. It's like a big spinny thing, and I think it <laughs> it's like a big spinny, uh, well... You know, those planetarium thingies, and it has various bonuses for magic around it. The effects mod for it as well. Community bug fix. This really just fixes a bunch of minor bugs. Which is nice to have. Uh, community modding framework. I think that's just used by a bunch of other mods around here. Caprio's minor high elf lords. It adds a few extra high elf lords around for the high elves. I think only four of them. Yeah. I haven't actually played as the high elves with this yet. But, you know, a few extra lords here and there makes factions a bit more unique. That's nice. Elon's Greybeard's Prospectors. Uh, this is a big overhaul for the Greybeard's Prospectors faction. Yeah. Um, as, I, as we saw in the campaign I did on them. Very nice. Uh, as I've also seen in some of my campaigns, can end up with the uh, Karaza Karak confederating into Greybeard's Prospectors. Which is very weird, because then you've but then you're fighting armies of very different dwarves, which is a nice way to um, mix up the campaign a bit. It's not very lawful, but again, and it's not based off of any like rule books or anything like that, but uh, the faction's really well done, and I find the idea is plausible, so. Uh, Empire, Master en Empire Master Engineer. It adds an extra hero for the Empire, the Master Engineer, as you'd expect. I think it acts like the uh, Engineer for the Dwarves. It's like a ranged hero who has a, uh, well, a rifle, which I think you could replace with like a repeater rifle, a Auckland long rifle, and a grenade launcher. And he can also have a mount, I think a clockwork horse, and I think he comes with various buffs for artillery and ranged units around him so yeah i haven't had played as the Empire that too much um expanded roster for amazons 
uh, this primarily at the moment this allows the uh lizardmen to recruit amazonian units uh it's still under work or i think this being worked into ov and lost factions expanded roster beastmen uh, this adds a bunch of new units to the beastmen these expanded roster ones are the ones which expand you know or expand the rosters and add units which they would have had in the tabletop which they don't have in the game this is things like zengors slangors and pestigors and uh corn gores as well as i think oh what is it called does it add the uh gorgon it might do so like a big minotaur um it also adds i think like gore tusk chariots razor gore chariots something like that um it also adds a uh what's it called a gore chieftain hero like a melee uh hero for the beastmen um and i think it adds some variants for bestigors i think it adds maybe a two hand weapons bestigor variant maybe a sword and shield variant something like that just adds a few more units uh expanded roster chaos dwarves this adds the chaos dwarf faction which we saw in my campaign for the chaos dwarves uh, this is needed for ov and lost factions all these mods as i've said before they should all work together um this is pretty much what i work with and it works for me so um yeah, I the, I think I said up here actually. Uh for Cadrian mod manager, you don't need to change the load order for this. Uh load order is automatic in alphabetical order. That means A to Z. Or it will be exclamation mark all the way down to Z. So you don't need to change that. Um Expanded roster green skins, goblin packs, and orc packs. This adds Bunch of extra units for the green skins. A lot of them are unnecessary, but the extra uh, flavor and variety, I am I welcome. Uh, things like forest goblin units, which, you know, yay, they're more goblins. But hey, you can make forest goblin armies. That's pretty nice. Uh, it also adds the spider spawn units for the forest go or for the goblins. It also adds orc boys with spears. Uh, it also adds two more variants of black orcs. You have black orcs with two hand weapons as well as a sword and shield or a chopper and shield uh also biggins with a chopper and shield um the spear chucker a ballista for the green skins a like cheaper artillery piece um anything else probably uh colossal squig and so on but yeah, you need, you know, this is just for goblin units. This one's just for orc units. Uh, expanded roster Kislev. This adds the Kislev faction. Um, which is quite good. Uh, faction flag toggle. This is a small UI improvement, which I liked. Um, you've probably seen me do this, use this multiple times in my campaigns. Um, if you're looking at the garrison of a building... Or of a settlement it's got usually the uh it's hard to see in this but it's usually got the little uh faction emblem or flag in the middle of the garrison screen covering up the uh units in the middle of here middle of here um with this it adds a little checkbox off in the top right corner of the ui for the garrison screen and you can toggle that on and off and it gets rid of the little flag. So you can see all of the units underneath the uh, faction flag. Which is very nice. GCCM2 custom assets. Just allows for some extra things. I think. I assume there. It's like some of the flamethrower effects. Uh, over dwarf. Uh, guard houses. GCCM main mod. I've got main mod here. And not the beta. Um, I don't know enough about the mods. To really be able to say which one is better. That could come down to personal opinion. Um, GCCM main mod. It adds a bunch of the uh, unique maps around the campaign. Done by the community, which is quite nice. You know, more maps to play on. They're not all balanced, but they add a nice amount of variety. Greybeard's Prospector's Climate Overhaul. Uh, this one, 
is more up to you, I suppose, whether you feel this is necessary or not. What this does is it means that Gravis Prospectors have desert as a uh, suitable climate, which helps a fair bit um, for the start they have down there. Though, I, I played with this when I did Gravis Prospectors, um, but if you'd want a bit of an extra challenge, you could, um, you could unsubscribe from this. Um, so that they would have a lot more difficulty in uh, colonizing around down in Araby. Anvil of All 2.0. This adds a crafting system for the High Elves. I haven't played as a High Elves in any of my series, so. But it, it's a functionally like the Dwarves uh, crafting system or the uh, Tomb Kings crafting system. I think they use Thilmar or something like that as a resource, possibly. Uh, immersive battle banners. This just makes the uh, banners for the various factions a bit nicer looking with some extra edging and as you can see little gems across the top of it. As well as changing the symbols. Um, just makes them a bit, a bit nicer. This is a re-release because I believe the original mod author, Den, uh, doesn't do modding anymore. But it was picked up with his, with their uh, permission. Or other models to keep updated. Land encounters. This adds, well, land encounters. Like the encounters you find on the ocean. Um, I like this one. It adds various areas you can explore to get some extra stuff here and there on the campaign map. Some of the armies you can get are quite powerful. Uh, I would recommend if it says to uh, that you might have to fight off a enemy army. Uh, to have a pretty good army. In case you end up attacking a uh, mid to high tier level Dark Elf army, which is... Uh, you're not going to be able to defeat that earlier on. I mean, you might. You probably could, actually, being a better player than I am. Uh, large units can attack walls, sub mod, plus miners. There's various... There's, there's several versions of this mod. Uh, I've got the one which adds wall destroyer to as many units as possible, including miners. Uh, this allows, as it says, various units to attack walls. This includes Kolek, Dragon Ogre Shagos, Durthu, Ancient Tree Men, All Giants, Necrosphinx, uh, and a few other ones. As well as miners. Dwarf miners can break down walls with their pickaxes. So it gives you another option instead of just having to rely on artillery or heroes. Instead, you can have a drag, uh, not a dragon, you can have a giant and just knock a wall down with a giant because that's pretty cool. Uh, Lawful Great Power, Beta. I don't know how this one is going. This one I've added, uh, what it does is it replaces a great power with something I th it think it um, makes it so that various areas have a preferred faction for controlling them. S okay, say Altdorf is preferred by other Empire factions to be owned by an Empire faction. And also owned by Reichland. If Bretonia comes in and takes Altdorf, then that's going to cause some diplomatic tension between the two. Uh, this applies even if Bretonia doesn't siege and conquer uh, Altdorf. If they just own Altdorf, then the Empire is going to be like, you know, you're you've you're taken land which is traditionally Empire. Um, and it gives them a little diplomatic malice there. Um, I think it's still being... It, I assume it's still being tweaked since it's in beta. I kind of think that the bonuses could be... Or the malices could be a bit higher than they are. But uh, it's quite nice. I'm always looking for things to, like, mix up the campaign a bit more. And to... Uh, <laughs> make it so diplomacy is a bit more... Upended for the order factions. Make AI not ignore each other. Make AI declare war on other AI more often. This apparently gets rid of the propensity for the AI to team up against a human player. Uh, what it does is, I think when the AI gets to, like, certain thresholds of minus diplomatic relations, say minus 200, 300, 400, uh, there's an increasing percentage chance that they'll just declare war against each other. So if... For whatever reason, Britonia and the Empire are at minus 200 diplomatic relations. Um, then even if they have a greater 
opponent in, say, the Warriors of Chaos, they will still have a chance to declare war on each other. Um, instead of sort of saying, you know, well, we, Bretonia and the Empire hate each other, but that human player or that Norska is a greater threat, so we're not going to go to war with each other. Again, it's more added for my hope that we will end up with possibly things like the Dwarves and the Empire fighting each other. I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> um, Marienburg landships adds a very nice landship model. Uh, landship unit for the Empire. I think it's producible from the uh, possibly level 3 or level 5 docks for the Empire. I think level 5 docks. Um, it's essentially like a uh, weaker steam tank with uh, several people on top of it with handguns which can shoot around. It's also got a cannon in the front of it. Um, Murworms and more. Again, I haven't actually seen this, but it adds merworms mur as a unit to uh, various factions. High Elves, Dark Elves, and also an undead Aminar mount for the Vampire Coast factions, which I think you get after completion of their campaign objectives. So, that's quite nice. Apparently it uses the uh, Dread Saurian animations, which I was quite surprised actually worked with the uh, merworm model. Mixus Legendary Lords 1 and 2. I think... One adds predominantly Empire Lords. Yeah, it says there, Empire, Kislev, Bretonia, Dwarves, what else? A bunch of extra Lords, various elect accounts, and uh, some extra ones here. I can't remember what they all are, but, you know, extra Lords is always nice. Uh, especially for the Empire, just having all the elect accounts makes things a bit, a lot more interesting. Next is Musilon. Fleshes out the Musalon faction so that they're more of a undead Bretonian other than just being vampire counts. It's nice. Uh, Mixus Unlocker. This is needed if you want to play as any of the uh, factions which aren't in the game in base. Uh, this allows you to play as them, say, as Musalon or as Avaland or whatever. You also need this for some of the other minor factions around, which are uh, featured in other mods. Mixus Unlocker Unlocked. I think this one just means that even minor factions are unlocked, which might not have a legendary lord. Uh, I've gotten this one I I assume because of another mod. Uh, probably a mod which expands on a minor faction which isn't included in this. So, if you want to play as It's Itza or something like that, uh, which are located in Dragon Isles, and you can do that, even if they don't have a legendary lord. Um, there would just be a generic Lizardman faction, but yeah, the choice is there. Uh, Van Geist's Revenge. It adds the uh, the spooky ghost Van Geist faction. I should come back and have another look at it again, because I really like that. You start as a vassal of Count Noctilus as Van Geist, and you're a spooky ghost captain with a spooky undead ghost uh crew and you sail around the oceans and find treasure and spook everyone no degradation persistent summons this one um is for my own uh personal preference really early on in warhammer 1 total war uh it used to be that when you summoned units of undead or skeleton zombies or anything like that they would be permanent for the entire battle they wouldn't have health um, degradation I really like that, because if I summoned a unit of undead zombies, I could use them multiple times during a battle. Later on, it was made so that undead units actually had a timer on them, and when that timer was up, they would quickly lose all their health and and collapse. Uh, this would apply for any summons. Undead, you know, zombies, skeletons, skaven, under, uh, what's it called? Skaven menace from below summons, or vile tide, vermintide spells, things like that. It gets rid of the uh, degradation. I found that it actually works with quite a few other mods. It must get rid of it at a ver get rid of the degradation at a very base level because it's functioned for quite a few factions, even uh, extra factions added by other mods. So I really like that. Um, it means that you can, as Skaven, you can get menace from below, and if you are overwhelmed, you can just summon extra clan rat units, and they will stay around for the battle. Which is quite nice. Uh, expanded roster. 
OVN lost factions. This is needed to play as Chaos Dwarves. OVN lost factions visual effects. Lost factions part one beta, part two beta. This is for OVN lost factions. You'll need all this, and you'll need this to play as Chaos Dwarves because this combines the expanded roster mod, expanded roster mod for OVN lost factions. Uh, Project Resurrection. This as a several other legendary lords i can't remember which ones off the top of my head maybe gorbad iron claw um as well as various other ones stakes for peasants now i like this mod uh because of what it does i do think it could do with a bit more uh functioning i was th thinking whether i would disable it for this pack i've included it just because eh, completion sake i suppose uh, what it does, it allows peasant bowmen for Bretonia to summon a unit of stakes, which sit in the ground, and they deal anti-large damage to any uh, large targets which come into contact with them. They're essentially immobile units which have only anti-large damage, so they can't hurt anything else other than large targets. Um, uh, the idea is sound. There's a little bit more work which could be done with them, Bretonian peasants tend to summon them on walls. Uh, the AI has no, you know, no tactics in regards to them. They'll summon them at the beginning of the battle and then immediately, uh, you know, immediately abandon the position where they summon them. That's fine. <laughs> um, because the AI doesn't know what they are. And that's un understandable. Modders can't change that. Uh, Swords of the Empire. Emperor. This has actually came out rather recently by Sholdad. This adds, uh, oh, what, Kurt Helborg, Ludwig Schwarzhelm, and Zintler. Someone Zintler as a legendary lord and two legendary heroes for the Empire. Uh, Kurt Helborg, I think, is a legendary lord. Ludwig Schwarzhelm, I think, is an emperor. For a hero, and the other guy is another hero as well. I think one's like the bodyguard of Karl Franz, another one's the head of the Reichsguard, and the other one's a captain of the Reichsguard or something like that. This also adds the uh, Imperial Foot as a unit, which uh, is recruitable by the Empire. They're the uh, they're like the Caribou Great Swords, lower in number. I don't know how I feel about that, but. Mm. Uh, but yeah, the extra characters are very neat, and they have custom-made mustaches, which is fantastic. Mod configuration tool. This adds a UI which pops up at the beginning of a campaign if the faction you're playing as has any uh, mechanics which would utilize that. I forget which camp factions I have which does that. <laughs> it's hard to remember all this. The Wood Elves, Emmy, uh, currently will be seeing some, we're seeing some of this in my Arguillan, uh, Durthu campaign. This adds various, uh, changes such as, uh, being able to upgrade, uh, outposts to an extra level, uh, at the cost of some amber, as well as more ways to get amber from events which occur, and some more research, and just a few extra things here and there for the Wood Elves. Wood elves, which uh, them function a bit better, <laughs> I suppose. Um, just more ways to get amber is very nice to have. Uh, UI modding framework. Again, I think that's just needed for some mods which have unique uh UI elements. I think like the Tylia Stalia Border Prince's plutocracy system or something like that. Maybe ultimate chaos. Vastly expands the uh, Warriors of Chaos faction. This will also affect Chaos armies which spawn due to, you know, the rise of Chaos during the campaign or uh, armies which spawn due to Chaos rebellions because of high Chaos corruption. Uh, we saw this in my Colex Sunny to campaign. This one I like overall. Uh, it does add the uh, various battery types of uh, artillery. To all factions which are in the base game so you will see things like 
units of nine Empire Great Cannons or nine Hell Blaster Volley Guns or Hellstorm Rocket Batteries or dwarf, nine Dwarven Grudge Throwers or Organ Guns and such. And I'm... You know, it might be a bit too much for me, but I like all the other Chaos units. Just being able to make themed God Chaos armies is very really nice. So... It's staying for the moment. Uniforms and heraldry for Bretonia, Dwarves, Empire, Greenskins. This mixes up the uniforms of them, makes them look a bit more uh, detailed. It also gives them, like, shields which have their uh, faction symbol on them. This is most notable for the Empire, where you'll have Avaland, and they'll have the uh, Avaland uh, heraldry on their shield, as well as for, like, Ostland, Nordland, and all that. Um... For the greenskins, it like gives them more variation in their appearance for their armor. Uh, there's also the one for the Skaven, which actually makes it so that units look a bit more in theme with the uh, faction you're playing as. If you play as Clan Moors, the units will have a bit more armor on them. If you're playing as Clan Pestilence, uh, the Clan Rats will have like Plague Monk uh, sort of robes and ta and uh, tatters on them. Rat Ogres will actually have some uh, bubos and such on them, as well as branding based on the clan which you're playing as. Um, I think Clan Eshin also, they ha they look uh, generally more sneaky amongst them. It doesn't actually change any of the units, it just changes the appearance of them. Unique steam tanks. This adds a bunch of extra steam tanks for the Empire, based off of ones from the lore. I think there's one which is a melee steam tank, there's one which is a mortar, there's one which is a health blaster volley gun in the front of it. Um, as well as some other ones, I can't remember all of them. Uh, we special. This adds extra characters for the greenskins in the campaign. This is like, uh, Tinnit, Four Eyes, and Snaggler, Grobspit for the forest goblins. Um, as well as possibly Gorfang, Rockcut. Uh, <laughs> just extra characters and so on. Um... Duff Skull, I think, for Skarsnick. As an extra, like, great, great goblin shaman. Why so furious as additional lords and heroes? This adds... I don't know if we've seen too much of this. I think this adds Zacharias, the ever, uh, the ever, the ever living. It also adds Conrad von Karstein. Uh, if you play as von Karsteins or vampire counts, I think. and uh, Or Sylvania now. And uh, take Drac... Uh, what's it called? Uh, the capital. Draken. No, not Draken. <laughs> uh, what's the capital of Sylvania? Where Manfred is, and, uh, you build, like, Crypt of the Mad Count, and you'll be able to get Conrad that way. Also adds Genevieve Diordan, or whatever her name is, the, uh, vampire lady, which is from a series of books, or a extra hero for the Empire, or Rackland. Um, as well as a few other things. Mellowboard um, is a character added by this, and that functions with Mixus Musalon. And Servants of Nagash, Faction Overhaul. This one changes how Ark and the Black uh, plays a fair bit. Uh, this is more in the realms of... Oh, because I like playing as the Servants of Nagash and Ark and the Black. Uh, it allows Arkan to cast spells from the lore of vampires so he can cast invocation of nehek on his tomb king units uh you can also summon um you also have access to more vampire counts units not all of them uh you can get cairn wraiths uh you can get crypt ghouls and crypt horrors through other buildings in certain settlements um it also adds some unique mechanics and such in other settlements. The Black Pyramid of Nagash gave me a unit of Black Pyramid Guard or something like that which was a unique unit of uh, Ushabti which had magical attacks and were better than the general melee Ushabti. Um, I assume it might also do something with Nagashiza. Mostly it's because I would like Ark and the Black to sort of be able to you know, get more powerful and have access to Vampire Counts units as he gets closer to 
bringing about the coming of Nagash again. So yes, that is all the mods here. As I said, this is not all the mods I have in my mod manager. If I swap this over, uh, we'll see. There's a bunch down here. Some of these I have actually unsubscribed from. Uh, I don't think I've I haven't got Chaos Dwarf Invasion in it, um, which if you want to play with uh, this, that's fine. It works perfectly fine. I just don't have it in the list there. Uh, I have got Bragon Faction Overhaul here, but I haven't activated it because I haven't been able to get it working. Um, other ones of these are just ones which haven't been updated. Um, what else here? Uriac No Fog. I do use this frequently. I haven't included it though because I assume the comp the compilation will activate all the mods automatically. And uh, this just removes the campaign fog. Uh, this is just for my own use at the end of a campaign so I can see what the world is like. Uh, Belisarians Rise of Dragons. I haven't included this one because uh, this requires a bit more fiddling with the other mods. You have to deactivate some other mods to be able to get Rise of Dragons working. Rise of Dragons replaces the Arachnos uh, greenskin faction down near Karak Zorn, and any other mod which modifies that faction, which includes OVN Lost Factions, we special, or possibly Greybeard's Prospectors, uh, will conflict with it. So you'll need to deactivate those three mods to be able to play with Rise of Dragons. That is Ovian Lost Factions, all parts of it, uh, including Pack 1 Beta, the uh, pack, Part 1 and Part 2, the vid visual effects, just to, be sh just to be clear, you know, so that you don't have... You know, bits of it floating around in the background. And possibly the Chaos Dwarves. Um, uh, what was the other ones which I said? Um, we Special, because this adds a Lord for the Arachnos down there or something. At least it modifies the faction. And possibly Greybeard's Prospectors. This was in my brief testing to see which mods I had to deactivate to be able to get it working. And those three, I don't know about this one. But, or not, not, not Desert Overhaul Climate, but Gravius Prospectors. Were... I'm not too sure about this one, because as far as I know, it doesn't modify that faction. But, it's what I had written down, and I've forgotten the exact process I went through. So, just to be, just to be thorough, I would deactivate all those if you want to subscribe to Rise of Dragons. Which is quite a good one. Anyway, uh, that is all of this. Uh, I should have mentioned right at the beginning that the... Uh, Link to this mod will be in the description below in the YouTube video when I upload this. So yes, I hope that is, uh, I hope that is useful for pe for people. Um, and uh, yes, I don't play with any uh, large overhauls. If you want to play with this with SFO, I'm afraid you're on your own. I have never played that mod myself, <laughs> so I can't help you with that. Um, I understand that there is a lot of compatibility mods made by other people to uh, get various mods compatible with uh, SFO. But yeah, I haven't looked into that myself. Anyway, I hope this is useful to people. Thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you'll join me again next time for whatever. Until then, though, farewell.